This conference will now be recorded. So in today's session, we are going to discuss about HTML events. So what exactly the HTML events and what are the various HTML events that we have in HTML programming on the HTML elements, we'll see. And how can we use those events, we'll see practically. Basically, what do you mean by event? Event describes an occasion or a situation when the corresponding business logic has to be defined. Event describes an occasion or a situation, so when the business logic has to be get expired. Like, for example, assume that I'm having a login screen. I'm having a login screen. On this login screen, I'm placing two text boxes over here. One is to enter username, second one is to enter password. And then here I'm having this button control, login button, and the capsule button. So I'm placing these two text boxes over here. Enter username, second one, enter password. Here I'm having this login button. And then here we're having this cancel button. So two buttons are available, login and the cancel. So after entering some data, I'm giving that username as, okay, some Ram Kumar. And the password I'm indicating like as some India at the rate one, two, three. I have entered some password. After entering the username and the password, when it will be validating the data, when you click on this particular login button, as soon as once you click on this login button, okay, as soon as once you click on this login button, it will be initiating the action to validate your credentials. So this click is nothing but an event. This click is nothing but an event. So upon click on the button control, it will do that operation for you. Okay, it will do the operation for you. Now, here we are cancelling this operation here. When, as soon as once you click on this cancel button, okay, as soon as once you click on this cancel button, it will cancel the operation. So, this click is nothing but an event. So, when coming to the button controls, what we have, we are having this click event. So as soon as once you click on this button control, if you want to do some operations, if you want to perform some operations at the client side, then we can use the help of HTML events. Basically, when coming to the button controls, button controls are used to invoke some business logic. In order to invoke the business logic, that business logic may be either client side business logic through JavaScript or server side business logic through Apex programming also, whatever anything so in order to invoke some business logic we are using the help of this button controls so when it will be firing that action when it will be invoking the business logic upon click on the button control so that means there are some events are occurred there is some situation is occurred based on that it will be firing the business logic now in this case here like the similar way okay like the similar way when coming to the user interface, whatever the controls that we have, like as some username and then password, I would like to find some actions. If it is a text box, then what kind of events will be available? Now let's see. For example, I'm having a text box. On this text box, what we are going to do, we are entering some data over here. We are entering some data over here. Like we are entering some welcome. So now, as soon as once you press the tab button, the cursor will be moving to the next control. So during that time, we are going to performing some operations. 
So whenever we are entering some character, see, as soon as once you click on this, okay, whenever we are pressing some keys inside this particular text box, then this is called as unchange. That means the text box value we are changing, like as WE. So that means character, has, that means content has been changed. So now the content has been changed, content has been changed, content has been changed, content. That means uh, whenever we are entering any character, automatically the content inside that text box has been changed. So in this case here, when coming to that, okay, when coming to the text boxes and button controls and various controls, as part of HTML programming, it has given the various events. So which will be executing in the browser side, okay, which will be executing in the browser side, that means in the client side, these will be getting fired. So as part of this HTML, we are having various events are available, which will be executing at the browser level. Now, then what are the various events are available as part of this HTML here? Okay, now let me explain one by one. Generally, if it is a server side, it will be executing at the Salesforce server level. But HTML events, that means nothing but only client side. So only at the browser level, it will be performing those operations. So in order to perform some operations at the browser level, we are using HTML event. That means client side event. These are also called as client side events. So what are the various client side events that we have? Okay, now let me explain. These are few common events. Okay, these are few common events are available as part of your HTML elements. As part of this HTML elements, we are having few common events are available. Let me explain. What are those events here? Like as we are having on click. Now we are having this on click event. That means upon click on the button control. On change. When you change the text box value. On blur. Whenever the cursor is moving here. On double click. On double click. We can do some operations. On load. Okay, we can do some operations. On key down, we can perform some operations. On mouse over, on mouse over, we can perform some operations. Like that here, we are having the various, okay, events are available. These are all our events. So, okay, event indicates an occasion or a situation when the corresponding business logic has to be get fired inside the application to perform certain operations. So, we can't invoke that here. That means we no need to execute those okay, business logics manually upon click on that button control or upon typing some data inside that. Automatically, if the event occurs, automatically it will fire that particular business logics. Now, let's see for example. Now, enter, let me show you that one small example. For example, I'm searching for a job over here. So that I'm using normally. Now, there is a text box here to enter the skill set. Now I'm typing some skill set over here. Yes, yes. That means let's see. Whenever I'm typing the character yes, yes, le, based on that character sale, whatever the other names are available, other jobs are available, other technologies are available, it is populating. Now tell me, have you entered any, have you click on any button control to search? No. Upon typing this character only here, let's see. Upon typing the character, internally some operations will happen. It will fetch the matching technologies information. It is populating, like as Salesforce development. See. So that means this is called as unchanged. Whenever the characters has been changed, whenever the content has been changed, automatically it will be firing that operation over here. This kind of operations. Now on mouse over, when you place the mouse pointer, mouse pointer on this particular control, we can do some operations also. At that time, we can go with mouse over. Now, 
So in this case here, whenever we are performing some operations, then we are using the help of this events. Now, let's see. Let me explain that what are the various events are available. Basically, event describes an occasion or situation when the business logic has to be get fired. When the business logic should get fired to perform certain operations inside the application. Now, in this case here, HTML events describes HTML events describes the occasions which fights the business logic, which fights the business logic at the client side, at the client side, that is at browser level, at browser level. At the browser level, I want to perform those operations here. I want to perform those operations at the browser. That means we can able to indicate here. Then, in this case, how can we implement that here? What are the various HTML events are available here? Now, let me explain that concept as well. Now, HTML events are the client side events, okay? The client side events. Client side event which will execute, which will get executed at the browser. Browser level. These are not server side, these are the client side over here. Now we have the below common HTML events. The first one, unchange. Unchange means what? Whenever the user is modifying that, okay, content inside the text box. That means text box means a component here. Whenever the user has modified that component, component value or the change the content inside that component, it will be fine. Now, in this case, it will fire when the user edits, user edit, or change the content inside the component. Whenever the user is modifying this content inside this component, then automatically it is going to be firing this particular event over here. It will fight this event whenever the user has modified the content inside the text box. Now, second one, unclick. Unclick means what? It will fight this particular, okay, it will fight this, okay, event, okay, when the user click on HTML element. That means it may be button control, it may be text box, it may be label, whatever, anything on that control or on that component, when the user click on this, it will be firing this unclick. Now, in this case, it will fire when the user click on HTML element. For example, it may be a button, it may be a label, it may be a text box, etc. Next one. And double click. So what is this event here? Basically, this event will be firing this okay operations when the user double click on the control here. Now it will get fired when the user double click on, on the component. Next one. 
ஆன் மவுஸ் ஓவர் ஆன் மவுஸ் ஓவர் தட் மீன்ஸ் வென் எவர் த மவுஸ் இஸ் ஓகே ஆன் த கண்ட்ரோல் when ever you are placing the mouse pointer like for example so when i place the mouse pointer on this control it is showing some tool tip text right okay now like the similar way okay tool tip text will be getting fired on mouse over whenever you are placing the mouse pointer on the control it will perform some actions over here now it will get fired when the user place the mouse pointer is the most pointer on the control next to on blur on blur so what do you mean by this on blur over here basically on blur is nothing but what on blur is nothing but so which is used to okay indicate okay whether the control is losing the focus that means for example okay we have two text boxes are available here there is a text box 1 text box 2 so now we have the text box 1 this is the text box 2 initially the cursor is available in the text box 1 after entering some data i want to enter the data in the second text box then generally what we will do will press the tab button from the keyboard as soon as when so press the tab button the cursor will be moving from text box 1 to text box 2 so whenever the cursor is moving from this text box 1 it will be firing the action that is on blur that means whenever the control is losing the focus then it is called as on blur now it will fire when the control loses the focus six one and key down that means what when the user has been pressed the key okay, when the user press the key okay on the keyboard then automatically on key down that means key has been pressed i did not release that key we can just have pressed and have hold that key over here like that enter button generally we can press the button we can release but i don't want to release that just i press that button just i push us that button in that keyboard over here then it will be firing that on key down now it will fire it will fire when the user press or pushes the keyboard key next to unload so now basically it will be firing whenever the user is or whenever the browser is loading the content whenever the browser is loading okay it is loading the content automatically unload will be getting fired whenever the browser is loading that content then it will be called as okay unload now it will fire when the browser is loading the content browser has loaded the content these are few common events are available as part of html So now, as part of HTML, these are few common events that we have right now. Like we are having this, the common events like okay, on change, on click, on double click, on mouse over, on blur, on key down, on load. Like these are the various events are available as part of HTML, which will be invoking the actions. So now in the client side, whenever whenever this particular event has been occurred, I want to fire some client side business logic. So then how can we do that? Okay, now let's see practically. Whenever when so whenever this event is occurred, I want to execute some business logic. Then how can we do that? Okay, now let's see practically in this case. Now let me show you with a practical use case over here. 
Now my requirement is I would like to place that okay a text box over here, text box control over here, and then I would like to place some button controls. Okay, I would like to place some button controls. Then I would like to know okay which button has been pressed, and then how to invoke some business logics. Okay, we'll show you practically over here. Now let's see over here. Let me take a small use case. Design a lighting web component to demonstrate the browser events. That means HTML events. That means which will be executing at the browser level. That means user interface level. We cannot end the business logic here. Now, let me go with that. How can we implement? I'm going to this Visual Studio Code. I'm designing a component over here. Now, I'm designing a component now. Control Shift P, creating a lighting of components here. HTML events component. Now, HTML events component. Now I'm going to the HTML file. Here I would like to place one text box and then three button controls over here. I would like to place that. I'm using this div tag. Inside this div, I would like to place that with the lightning input. Lightning input control. Now I'm giving the properties. Label property. Enter the search content. I'm indicating this name property. Label, okay, search. I would like to specify the placeholder. Placeholder is nothing but enter such a text. Okay, now I'm placing one text box over here. I will come to the properties again. Now I'm indicating this lightning button. Lighting button. I would like to specify that properties. Label equals to click me. I'm indicating this name property. Name equals to BTN click me. And then I would like to specify the variant. Variant equals to brand. I'm using this variant equals to brand. Next, I would like to place that control here. Lightning button control. Properties. Label equals to search records. Name equals to button search. Variant equals to brand. Next. I'm preparing one more button control over here. Lighting button. Label equals to show records. Name equals to PTN show records. 
and the variant equals to that. So these are the button controls. We have prepared the various button controls and we have placed the text boxes also over here. So now here in this case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to placing this text box over here. And then beside this text box, I would like to place this button control here so that I would like to indicate some spaces here, ampersand in VSP semicolon, and then ampersand in VSP semicolon. And after that, I'm giving the two break tags. Now, these two button controls I want to show at the bottom place also. Now, let's see in this case here, how can we do that? Now, I would like to apply some style also, for that one I'm using. HTML events component, that's CSS. Inside this, I'm providing this style for this div tag. I would like to specify the width. width 400 pixels and then i would like to specify the border okay border one pixel solid block and then i'm indicating margin left margin left i'm indicating some 300 pixels margin top i'm indicating 200 pixels and the border radius, I'm indicating one pixel. Sorry, border radius, I'm indicating 10 pixels. And then padding left, padding left equals to 20 pixel. Padding right equals to 20 pixels. Padding top equals to 20 pixels. And the padding bottom equals to 20 pixels. These are the various borders that we have applied styles. Now, just I'm going to be representing the button controls that since I'm not doing anything here. I'm pushing this code into my scratch arc. Let me save this file. So now my code has been run. Okay, I'm able to push my code into my scratch arc now. Now let me go to that, okay, scratch arc, and then let's run the application here. Go to that default arc. I'm going to the developer console. Now let me specify the application name, the component name that is, okay, HTML events component. Now run this. I'm able to run the component over here and now I'm able to place the text box also. I'm indicating this, okay, the button control, I have placed two button controls also over here. So, but the button controls are, okay, the button controls are going to be taking Okay, side by side here, it is not showing that space also. Let me give it some space. Set your records and show records. I'm indicating this, okay, I'm percent in BSP percentage and then I'm percent in BSP percentage. Now, I would like to place this control and then I'm indicating this, okay, it will be 600 pixels. Now, let me see. So it is pushing the code to the scratch arc. 
now let me save this code also now let's refresh this i'm able to place the text box over here i'm able to press the button control. okay let me give you okay let me give that a break point so that i can able to show that Just I would like to use this break. Break tag. Now refresh this. So let's see. This is the text box over here, which is providing okay, some placeholder that means watermark that is enter such a text. This is clicking. When I click on the button controls, nothing is happening over here. Okay, nothing is happening. So in this case, in the text box, I want to show some value. Okay, I want to show some value. How to show some value? For that one, we have to go to JavaScript. Go to the JavaScript file that means inside that JS file, write that content. That means I want to define a variable. In this variable, whatever the value we have entered, that value I will need to show. So, in this case, here I'm defining a variable over here. Like, for example, I'm indicating such a text. I'm indicating that such a text value as some Ram Kumar. I'm indicating. I have placed this, I have defined a variable that is called as JavaScript property, that is called as such a text. And in this property, I'm storing this value, okay, Ram Kumar. Now, what I want to do is, whatever the value we have entered, this value I want to show in my HTML text box. For that one, we have a property over here. There is a property called as, okay, value property. Value, what value you want to show? So here we can specify the variable name. Okay, we have to indicate that. So now, which variable value you want to show it over here? We have to specify that. For that one, don't specify any okay, double quotes over here. Inside that, okay, braces, we have to specify the variable name that is called as such a text. Because I have defined this variable here, whatever the value we have entered in the text box, this value I want to show inside my text box, okay, as a label. Now let's save this. Now. Now let's see. When I go to that lighting component, refresh this one. Now we can see in the text box it will show the default value Ram Kumar. So whenever the page is getting loaded, it will be collecting that value over here. Let me specify. Such a text variable over here, which I have defined. I have defined this variable over here. Now, value property in this variable, whatever the value we have entered, we can able to place it. So in this case here, I would like to, okay, I would like to change that value. Whenever the user is changing this value inside that, okay, whenever the user is changing this value, I want to invoke some actions also over here. Handle and change. Handle and change. Now let's see. Now let me show you that.
So as soon as once you click on this, click me, okay, we'll need to find some action over here. Upon click on this button control. As soon as once you click on this button control, I would like to do that. And then along with that, whenever I'm changing this particular content inside that, I would like to indicate. Now, let's see. I'm implementing this. There is an event here and change. Now, and change. And change equals to, I would like to find that, okay, action. What is that action I would like to specify? Handle and change. This is a method I would like to find. So in this method, it will be performing some action. So we have to write this method here where we can write inside the JavaScript file. Here we have to write that method over here. I would like to write that method inside this JavaScript file over here. Now I'm indicating this. Handle and change. I would like to specify the alert. Alert, such a text has been modified. Such a text has been okay, modified. What are the such a text that we have entered in this particular text box? That such a text value should be get modified over here. Now, let's see. Now, let's see that. Let's go to that browser events. Refresh this. Whenever I'm typing some characters, uncut type error cannot read properties of undefined reading apply. Let me check the properties, label property, name property, placeholder, value property, and the unchange. Now, let me say, refresh this. It is not reading the proper property properly. Why it is showing this error message? Let's check. Template file. Let's check into the JavaScript. The JavaScript variable that I have defined.
So let me check there might be some browser issue. Let me read the content here. It's going to search a text. Search a text is I want to show that. Search a text. Let's verify. Now it is not reading this file over here. Let me check JavaScript file has been pushed or not. Let me save this JavaScript file. So I forgot to specify or forgot to save that JavaScript file might be because of that it is not reading that content over here. Let me save this JavaScript file. Okay, now let's run that. Let's refresh. Now, right. Exactly. So I forgot to save that JavaScript file so that it is unable to read. So now in this case here, whatever the text box that we have placed in the text box, I would like to represent this content over here. That means whatever the variable value that we have, those variable values I would like to show on my text box control. So that here we have pushed that code also. Let's let's see. Inside my JavaScript property, whatever the value that we have, we have entered over here. Now, so now here we have used one event over here. What is that unchanged? That means whenever the text box value has been changed, then I would like to indicate that I would like to fire some action. So that whenever once you click on this, okay, whenever we whenever you are changing the content, I would like to fire some event here. That is here unchanged. Whenever the content has been edited, whenever the content has been modified, then I would like to fire this particular okay method. So now here, once you go to this method here, we can able to verify that okay handle and change. So now this is a method will be called which will be representing one alert message okay such a text has been modified. Now let's see in this case. So now as soon as once you change this value here. Whenever I'm changing this value here, like as some Ram Kumar, I'm adding this R one more. So now it is indicating such a text has been modified over here. It is adding one more. If I'm removing some content here, it is indicating that. So now it is indicating the message. Whenever I'm removing one more character, it is indicating such a text has been modified. So depends upon that. As soon as whenever we are changing this content, automatically the event will fire. It will perform the action also. Like that, we can able to write. So now, for example, as soon as once you click on the button control, I would like to show some message over here. Like in this case for the button control, I would like to indicate. So now on click. On click, I would like to specify. On click, click me. Okay, handle click me. Handle click me. This is the method name. We can specify the method name over here. Which method you would like to invoke? You can specify the method. I want to prepare the method over here. And it will click me. I want to show the message. Alert message. Now, in this case here. You have click on. Click me button. Which button have you clicked over here? Now I would like to show that. Now, like the similar way, when I go to this button control here, okay, set a record. I want to fire some event here. Unchange. Sorry, unclick. Unclick. I would like to call that. Handle such records. Now this is the method name. Okay, we can prepare the method over here. We know functions. That means JavaScript functions. I'm indicating alert box. Alert. I'm indicating. You have clicked on search records button. 
so that we can able to show the content whatever you want. Now push that code into the scratch arc. That means I'm preparing a function. Just you can prepare a function. In that function, we can able to write that content which you would like to execute. Now let me push this HTML code also. Let's go back. Go to go back to the user interface. Refresh it. Now let's see. So as soon as once you click on this click me, it is showing that pop up alert here. You have click on a click me button control. Now when I click on set your records button, it is indicating you have clicked on set your records button. So the pop up alert will be getting visible over here. Now. Sometimes when I click on this button control, I want to know what is the button control name and what is that okay value. <coughs> I will like to collect. That means the label of the button, name of the button. Label means what? Show records. I want to identify how can we do that. For that one, I will like to prepare a method over here. So for this one, I'm using this on click. On click. I'm indicating handle on click. Handle on click. Now I'm preparing a method here. But I want to know, I want to collect that. Okay, I want to collect that. Okay, event name. So now here, which button have you clicked? Okay, what is the label of the button? What is the name of the button? I want to know. For that one, I'm using a parameter called as event. Event. So now event is a parameter here which will be collecting the event. That means which control has invoked this event that will be collected by this event here event parameter will be collecting okay event parameter will be collecting which control has invoked this event so that we can collect that i'm indicating this here to collect that we are using okay event dot okay target target means what which button has invoked that here we can specify target dot label target dot label i want to show that value inside a variable here so i'm indicating constant now the button label label equals to event dot target dot label. so event will be referencing this is a reference parameter which will be identifying which control has invoked that to get that target that means to get the button control name to get the button control details to get the component details we are using that from that one i would like to collect the label now constant button name equals to event dot target dot okay name i would like to collect so i want to show that information alert i would like to specify you have clicked on i would like to show the button label button label the button name is i would like to show that button name so now i am collecting the details of the button which button has invoked this event i am collecting the button details here label of the button and the name of the button now i am collecting those details So I'm collecting those details over here. Based on the details, I would like to invoke this. Now, so I would like to call this method here. Now let me save. Now let me save the HTML file also. Now done. Let's go back to my browser. Refresh this user interface. Now, whenever I'm changing this content, it will be indicating because such a text has been modified. Once you click on the button control, it is indicating you have clicked on click me button. Once you click on such a records button, it is indicating such a records button has been clicked. 
when you click on show records button it is indicating you have click on show records button over here the button name is btn show records so that we can collect that property button b properties also here the control properties also we can able to collect so that as soon as once you click on this okay button controls we can do some operations also that facility will be available so that here we are using the help of html events so we are not sending the request to the salesforce server only from the client side we are able to perform all these operations also so till now we have used a purely javascript and then we have used purely okay html but now we are mixing this together so now we are defining some variables inside this okay javascript over here and then these variable names are showing on the text box and then when i click on the button control on this particular okay user interface we are going to be firing this particular actions also by writing some javascript functions inside it so that defining the variables functions and everything will be very very important that's what we have discussed all this information information prior coming to these examples this is the way we can able to write that okay javascript code and then we can call them from the html file also now let me place that html file javascript code and the style file now i'm giving a small assignment to you here try this one or else i will tell you tomorrow design a lighting web component to implement a basic calculator to implement the basic calculator application and perform all the mathematical calculations and to perform all the basic mathematical calculation addition subtraction multiplication division okay upon click on the button control collect that values and then do the addition and we can show that result on the text box again here okay try this functionality today in tomorrow session okay if you are not uh, already if you are not implemented i will show you tomorrow and tomorrow we'll see the concept of decorators so what exactly the decorator how to restrict that simply we can say it's like as a access specifies it's like as a access specified here so whether that variables can be accessible within the component or parent components also where it will be accessible that we can indicate with the help of decorators we have three decorators api decorator track decorator and the wire decorator we'll see what exactly track what exactly api what exactly wire we'll see that one by one okay now so try to implement this functionality today here now thank you thanks for your time